much for staying with us and joining us. Now, Cabinet Secretaries Kiriako Tobiko, Professor Margaret Kobia, and Dr. Fred Matiangi are this morning holding a high-level roundtable meeting with development partners in a Nairobi hotel. The main focus in the, in the meeting is, is of areas of collaboration to sustain the Greening Kenya campaign. Let us listen in to what the CSS said a short while ago. I think it is not by chance that uh, uh, CS Matiang is here. Uh, uh, that actually, as you know, he chairs the cabinet committee uh, in line with the recent presidential decree that coordinates uh, government projects and programs. There cannot be a more important program than the program that we are discussing here today. And I think C.S. Matiangi really uh, uh, this <coughs> Greening Kenya initiative and the whole issue about uh, forest cover uh, really squarely fall within uh, our collective document. And secondly, government will do and is doing what it must in terms of ensuring that there are policies, there are laws in place, strategies in place, enabling environment, incentives. Because you can't, it is not possible just to plant trees for the heck of it. Oh yes, yes, it is better. Trees are beautiful, we must plant them. But it's not just for romantic purposes. There has to be an investment, a return on investment. So we must incentivize uh, tree planting and tree growing, as, as Vibalt uh, reminds us. So the government is doing that. Uh, thirdly, as we sit here, we know the connection between forest and climate change. We know. Uh, we are presently going through uh, tough times, drought, famine relief. And there is a direct correlation between that and climate change and global warming. And of course, all of us know that forests do contribute either to mitigate climate change or to contribute uh, to climate change in terms of deforestation. So climate change is real. That's why, that's why our rains are no longer predictable as they used to be. That's why our rivers have dried up. That's why, in part, the Mara River is completely dried up. In fact, the Mara River ecosystem is dying. The Masai Mara, the existence of it and its status is threatened. And so on and so forth. Why? Because we have denigrated our forest reserves. I'll just give you some statistics. We have 2.5 million hectares of forest in Kenya, gazetted forest in Kenya, 2.5 million hectares. Of that, 140,000 hectares are degraded. 140,000 hectares of our forest, natural forest, are degraded. Now, KFS, it takes KFS about, uh, well, over the time, over time, five to rehabilitate per year, 5,000 hectares. You calculate how long it will take KFS to regenerate 140,000 hectares of natural forest. Now, these natural forests also happen to be, or most of them, at any rate, 
are water catchment, water towers. They supply water to our people in Kenya and also in the to the region. We have 18 gazetted water towers. You know them. Right. 18 of them are gazetted. Only one or two of them are, actually one is fenced, the other there. The other partly fenced, Mount Kenya and Eburu. The rest are neither surveyed, they are neither titled, nor are they fenced. They encroach on. We are planning to gazette another 70. So I think it is important, as we discuss here, uh, you know, Environment Cabinet Secretary Kiriako Tobiko, they are addressing a high-level roundtable meeting with development partners in Nairobi Hotel. The main focus of the meeting is areas of collaboration to sustain the Greening Kenya campaign. I am being told that right now, Interior Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Matiangi is currently speaking, addressing that roundtable. Let's cross over and listen in. And uh, the PSU is here. My sister, our cabinet secretary for youth is traveling, but PSO Wino has taken that comment so that when they engage with the youth fund, there will be a framework that sets aside resources that will support the youth who want to engage and contribute to the greening campaign as it were. As for my sister's concern on the plans that we have and whether or not we are actually ready for some of the environmental challenges we are likely to face, yesterday you saw my colleagues uh, the cabinet cluster that is dealing with disaster management right now, not only raising the alarm, but I can confirm to you that as government we have been spending a lot of time recently looking at our preparedness and our readiness to deal with some of the challenges we face. Granted, and then I am not going to use a public opportunity to mourn, we may have lost certain opportunities, but uh, we are better off because we have learned from those lessons and we want to improve how uh, we work together going forward. And it is through collaborations with organizations such as yourselves, non-state actors, building closer, practical, and very pragmatic collaborations that we will succeed. So every one of you who's here, who's not government, especially those of you who have come from civil society groups and so on, we as government, we long lost that attitude, and our president has been the best possible example of that. We long lost that attitude of drawing a dichotomy in development matters between private and public, between state and non-state, and so on. This is about us. It involves all of us. And we have to work together, and I, I welcome all your contributions. And as we move forward, in about two to three weeks' time, we are now going to unveil our Greening Kenya caucus, complete with its secretariat at the Ministry of Environment, led by the Ministry of Environment. And that Greening Kenya caucus will provide you the opportunity you need as a non-state actor to very directly be involved and sharing the resources that will be available in ensuring that we contribute towards enhancing uh, uh, our environment in the country. Lastly, uh, this is just the beginning of our engagement. Uh, we intend throughout this campaign, especially in the next three uh, years, to have a very, very active uh, engagement with all the stakeholders. Uh, in, in this matter. There is no way, and we cannot delude ourselves, that we are going to succeed by having conversations within the corridors and the offices of government. You notice very clearly that we are not doing that anymore. Uh, conversations that are going to take us further are those that we are going to have with others, so that we uh, implement this in an inclusive manner that brings everyone on board. And please, uh, you are welcome to be with us and to work with us as we uh, walk this journey. Shortly, uh, I am going to make an announcement. And uh, for our young ambassador, uh, I met that uh, little girl some time back. And I was very impressed by her acute sense and awareness uh, of environment. She is probably the best possible example of what we should do with our children. And I mean, and I'm. Um, not only an admirer of hers, but uh, I, I am also an admirer of her mother, because such good initiatives come from, uh, you know, a parental activity, uh, as it were, and good parental activity. 
my sister, a professor from the um, uh, university, I, I, we will have better discussions after this meeting because uh, what you said about opening up your initiative to the country is what we want to do. In our Green in Kenya caucus, when we make the when we unveil the caucus uh, uh, shortly, led by uh, CS Tobiko, you will notice that we are going to introduce even county campaigns. Kenyans need to know which one of our 47 counties is the most green county, and uh, the county that puts more resources in the environment. Then they get an award, and we are going to work with agencies here. Uh, to ensure that institutions, universities or schools uh, or TVET institutions that support environment most and that do most uh, you know, to the environment are able to be accorded or they can get some sort of support for that work they're doing. So what you are doing is not in vain. It's as if you knew that there is going to be some level of competition at some point and you're going to remain ahead all the time when it comes to looking at institutions that do a good job in supporting uh, the environment as it were. We'll get into some level of detail in this, but I want to assure you that we are going to be your very trusted partners in dealing with this. Whatever challenges you face, let us have conversations and see how best we can support you, even with the meager resources we have, uh, and even the meager resources that we raise, we work on it and share those resources together uh, as it were. So thank you very much. And uh, before we sign the agreement, I have received a pledge this morning from uh, Mr. Manu Chandaria of two million shillings towards the Green Kenya campaign. And um, Mr. Chandaria, I, I am going to consult my colleagues on your contribution to the National Youth Service and to the Correctional Service, says, and I want to announce that I am going to be uh, generous because that award, I will share it with the university and with the other institutions that are involved in this so that we do this work together, as it were. I know Sainabu has something to do with those uh, pledges shortly. Let me turn it over to her as we prepare to sign the uh, MOU. Sainabu. Thank you very much, CS. Um, I'll be sharing my screen with you as uh, of course CS, yes, we do appreciate your commitment, the commitment of your colleagues in this room. Um, before we sign the MOU, allow me to call Mr. Chatterjee to say his closing remarks. And then CS, yes, as soon as CID is uh, finished, I will call you back here to receive the two pledges that we have. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chatterjee, please welcome. Interior Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Matiang.